All right, thank you very much. My name is Mudibe Mudiba uh, from the Inside Africa. Just some questions for the ABC. Um, in June this year, Sanga awarded the Kulin with two awards. Um, I think it was for excellent governance. And I bet you said there's a, there's a regression in terms of the Kulin. Um, I think over the years, I think the city manager, the, uh, Dr. Imogen and Mashaz, has managed to run a tight ship. What do you think has contributed to the regression, as you've stated? Um, the second question is with regards to Twani. You've mentioned that there's been some improvements, but we've seen uh, black communities complaining about the administration there in Twani. We've seen black service providers complain that they've not been paid their invoices by uh, the administration there in Twani. Um, and the lack of service delivery in black communities. Uh, my final question, yesterday the former president Tawbeke was addressing a visa with regards to uh, these financial statements and clean audit and municipalities. And one of the things that he mentioned was that um, one, of, one of the key um, mistakes from the ANC-led government is that they did not deploy critical thinkers or um, their best candidates in municipalities. Um, are you happy with the deploys in the housing province in uh, local government? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name. Oh, thank you. Uh, Junior Kumar from News Africa. Just to build on uh, the question that was asked by my colleague, uh, when it comes to Twani, um, you, you speak about a regression. Uh, and in Joburg, you speak about uh, uh, the council has maintained an unqualified audit. Do you think um, the issue of coalition governments and the instability in these uh, metros has contributed to uh, the metros not improving uh, in terms of their audit outcomes? Thank you. Let me see, Pulali Twiggy Jones from ENCA. You say greater urgency is required <clears throat> from accounting offices to address service delivery issues. Um, how will this be looked into? Um, you speak about uh, you speak about plans to improve the financial management and governance as well. <coughs> what are these plans? I mean, and we also often we hear of an accountability culture that must be enforced in these news practices, but most of the time there's a lot of these news practices. Many examples in 2021, 2022. Um, what accountability measures are being enforced to ensure that these officials are being held to account. And just lastly, the AG speaks about lack of financial discipline and consequence management <coughs> of ineffective oversight resulting in inadequate service delivery. What is the plan to assist some of these uh, municipalities? Thank you. Uh, that's the, the, the first question and message. Oh, could I can go yeah. your first question? Plans to improve the financial management and governance. Um, Tony Sabova from IOPC. I also have a couple of questions that I might want to answer before I ask a couple now. Um, my first question um, is around um, irregular expenditure. Now, irregular expenditure for housing is um, uh, been increased by 19%. Um, I think that's, that's the biggest increase in terms of uh, the nine provinces. Um, I think to put it in a word, it's quite staggering. What has led to this, and um, just maybe um, what what plans are there to, to actually ensure that, um, especially when the expenditure is uh, is uh, increased? Um, my second question um, is around Metro. Um, for the past decade, Metro uh, has had a clean audit. Um, I know, obviously, uh, when you compare its budget uh, to the answer of the time, it's very minuscule, but are there any lessons that can be learned uh, from Metro and uh, its clean audit record? And uh, then my last question that might be a bit uh, more hard. Um, in terms of um, temporary um, shelters, we do know that um, recently, uh, when we see there was um, another building, uh, a hijack building caused in fire in, uh, in Johannesburg, a number of people died. Is there the money or is there any plans um, because I think it, uh, what, what we hear from the Hansburg municipality is that all they need is a bit of money to actually um, remove these people and put them in temporary shelters and actually improve these um, these um, these buildings. So is there money or is there any plan to actually deal with these buildings from a financial standpoint? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
<laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> you guys are saying this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we're not very so I'm excited to say this. This is a democratic government. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good uh, morning, C. Good morning, uh, colleagues uh, from all the rest of the houses. My name is Jean Sonnen, uh, partner from the Capital and Provincial Treasury. Um, some of the questions uh, that have been asked are interrelated, so I hope that when I respond, you can pick up that I'm already responding. So I will not repeat, uh, you know, if talking about regular expenditure, I'll just cut that covered across. Uh, in terms of, um, uh, for example, in terms of uh, the audit documents, as MEC has indicated, is that uh, uh, essentially what the audit document says, if it says we are unqualified, uh, it means it's a true reflection of what is happening in the municipality. It doesn't mean that the uh, you know service delivery is happening or is not happening, but the report is a true reflection of what has happened in the municipality from a, from both the point of the finances and also from the point of uh, um, uh, the performance of the municipality. Uh, has uh, there is the, you will find that uh, there is a disjuncture. In terms of the service delivery that you see on the ground, and the fact that a municipality can still uh, achieve 18 audits because they are correctly, the information is accurate, is valid, and is complete. Therefore, uh, it seems uh, the municipality is uh, whatever is reporting to its stakeholders is accurate. <coughs> so, when it makes you, when you go to issues of disclaimers, as the MEC has indicated, and others, so with a, a, a disclaimer, the information is not even available for the agent to even express an opinion on the information. But when it is addressed, it says that the understatement, so what is, is being found on the source documents is not correlated to what is actually reported. So I'm just coming to the point that uh, as much as we're talking about regressions in municipalities, but they could still, uh, uh, you know, uh, there could be positive uh, signals uh, in that are coming out of that. And also, I think what you also need to appreciate is that uh, with the city of Kurulemi, uh, the DDG will talk into detail. It was a specific area where there was a finding. So it doesn't mean that now they can't be ordered for the other good work that they have done as a municipality. But because of this specific area, uh, AG had to highlight it and report it as such. So um, he, uh, so in a way, I'm trying to um, uh, explain the technical aspects that go into assessing the information and expressing an opinion eventually about what is happening in the municipality. Uh, in terms of uh, the accounting officers, how are we planning to improve uh, the, 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 the aspects uh, or the accountability as far as the accounting officers are concerned? Uh, I think one of on the on the statement that the MEC uh, has indicated is that um, I think for the first time um, in detail before the financials uh, uh, were actually submitted around the 8th of August, there was a workshop we, uh, that was both the National Treasury, Quarter, and the Provincial Treasury in South, where it was clearly articulated, uh, it was about educated, uh, educating all the role players from the government's point of view about their responsibilities, you know, and uh, I think we saw uh, internal audits and audit committees doing uh, more, putting more effort uh, compared to previous times in terms of how this is done. And one of the top five findings that MEC indicated was consequence management. And because uh, consequence management, the whole point of, of implementing consequence management is to ensure that uh, people take accountability. You know, if wrong is done, uh, whoever was responsible for that wrong. Uh, is called to book, uh, whether we recover the monies or various, you know, the different forms of uh, 
Police Case Management uh, to the point that uh, cases uh, can be opened with the police in certain instances. So that's as far as it goes. So it could be a disciplinary hearing in house if it could be deemed. Uh, so the starting point with Police Case Management is about checking if it's issues of training, other staff are capable of uh, doing their jobs. If it's a, a, if you move on to disciplinary uh, measures within the organization to the point that we refer the cases to the SAPS and end it over to NPA. So um, those are some of the uh, accountability measures we're looking at by ensuring that firstly, the disciplinary boards in the municipalities are established. They know what they're supposed to do so they're properly trained and they actually implement what needs to, 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 to be done. The municipal public accounts committees are in place and they analyze the financial records of the municipalities. So it's such that if discipline, uh, discipline, disciplinary cases need to be implemented, then that is what uh, should uh, be done. So consequence management is being viewed as one of the critical things that have not been happening as they should and should that happen, and uh, which is the plan, is to intensify that particular aspect. And hopefully the outcome is a culture shift in the municipality from, from all levels. But the accounting officer needs to lead the way in ensuring that uh, is, is, is done properly. Uh, uh, and then lastly, on the part of irregular expenditure. Irregular expenditure is basically um, expenditure that is in head, so there would be a product or a service that you, you will see. So, uh, but the process uh, to actually incur that expenditure is not uh, in, in full compliance of the law. So the procurement uh, regulations were not completely adhered to even though service delivery did take place or the goods were delivered. So that's what leads to irregular expenditure. And what plans are in place? Exactly, consequence management is, uh, is, is, is one of these uh, 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 strategies we're looking at by ensuring that firstly people are properly trained and capacitated to do their jobs. Uh, because sometimes it's a, it's a matter of errors, not that it's always an issue of fraud or corruption. Therefore, the accounting officer needs to take the lead and differentiate uh, between the root causes of this irregular expenditure and ensure that uh, people, uh, the staff is properly trained and uh, that the other consequence management issues are spoken about in terms of internal disciplinary uh, code uh, implementation and uh, also eventual issues of uh, prosecution. Thank you. Do you want to add on the regular expenditure? Yes. And I'll come back because I know you want me to answer. Ne? <laughs> uh, you want some poli political spin, uh, <laughs> political flavor. Uh, I'll, I'll come, I'll come. Thank you very much. Uh, you see, good morning um, to the media houses. My name is Owen Verpoor. I'm the Deputy Director General in Health and Treasury responsible for municipal finance oversight and implementation of the municipal finance register. And I think actually has articulated uh, legislatively what the requirements are uh, in terms of irregular expenditure for a municipality to meet that particular threshold. Now, although I heard earlier a number being quoted about 19%, but if you look at the actual figures uh, in terms of the audit outcomes um, for this year, or for the year prior, it was about 6.4 uh, billion, uh, and that has grown from 5.9 billion in the 2021-22 financial year. Now, I think that needs to also be read in context because when you look at the audits in terms of the regular expenditure, it has actually improved. You know, from the from the 14 to the from the 15 to the 14 um, in the current year. Also, what has been a major issue is around procurement, uh, which is embedded in that process, and, and the major findings has been around non-compliance with procurement. But also when you look at some of the material aspects um, in terms of budget, because obviously, you know, the expenditure is derived from, from the municipal budget. And in, in some cases, some of our metros have actually overspent in terms of the budget, and that has also contributed <coughs> To irregular expenditure. Um, let me see if I'm allowed 
this on the um, uh, support to municipalities and what is being done in terms of consequence management, the provincial government, ourselves as Treasury and Copter and Salga have actually had a number of workshops with municipal public accounts committees. And what we have also done is attending uh, some of those public accounts committees to be sort of become a soundboard to the municipal public accounts committee members in an effort to advise and guide during those particular proceedings. I think there is. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> the, someone was asking about oh, someone was asking about the, the awards. People who then got two awards are then replaced. Uh, <coughs> just not sure what they the award about, but I think there must be an appreciation that the the area of governance <coughs> uh, is vast. So there might be uh, one area that the municipality is not doing well on, but there might be other areas that it's doing well. So the fact that the, the overall audit outcome has uh, regressed from what is uh, commonly known as clean audit to unqualified, it doesn't mean that things are bad. And that's why I <coughs> started by explaining the different uh, uh, audit outcomes. Okay, unqualified doesn't mean you are bad. Uh, you are fine. But the problem is there's one or two weaknesses that the Auditor General wants you to rectify. <coughs> that's why it becomes unqualified with the uh, uh, opinion. So, so, so it doesn't mean that if they did not get a clean audit, they don't deserve a, an award. It might be that they are the best uh, employer, for instance, uh, because they give their uh, <coughs> employers uh, they, or they've created a conducive environment for the employees and all that. So I thought I should uh, <coughs> deal with that. Um, and then the, the Tuani issue, Lack of service delivery in, in the communities. Uh, that, of course, concerns us. Uh, if you will see in uh, both Atrebe, both Mandalodi, and a lot of the townships, uh, uh, <coughs> there's a uh, regression in terms of service delivery. We are definitely concerned, and we have not given our disappointment uh, with that. And that's why we are. Unfortunately, even forced to now do things that ordinarily we are not supposed to be doing because it's not our competence in terms of the constitution, like cleaning, picking the waste, not just in town, <coughs> everywhere in the province. Because as a provincial government, we understand the important and central role that how they, as a province, plays in the continent and in the economy. Uh, we, 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 we have gone out to uh, put more money, for instance, in fighting crime, despite the fact that policing is not a provincial competence. But if there's crime, it affects all of us, but it also impacts negatively on the economy. And we say we want to create jobs. So we can't create jobs if investors are not coming, the economy it's not growing. So we can create jobs through government temporary interventions only. We need jobs that are uh, <coughs> that are sustainable. So, so it's an issue that uh, we are dealing with as well. You would have seen yesterday, uh, I think it's day before yesterday, we just went, uh, opened a new route from, uh, from Germany uh, to Johannesburg. It has got huge financial, I mean, uh, economic implications for our economy. You will know, for instance, that BMW is here in the Victoria uh, uh, and Johnson. So, what it means is that if your car is stuck and there's a part that they don't have, you overnight you can get it. So, you can imagine uh, how big is that. And, uh, <coughs> but the media doesn't seem to understand. It. So, that's why it was not a big story, you know. So there's a lot that we are doing. Um, there's a lot that we are doing to make sure that uh, 
we'll start the economy, we'll fight crime, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with other social issues and all that. So it's not only in Tuani where we are concerned service delivery, uh, we are concerned uh, everywhere. But there has been um, uh, an amplified voice from, as you say, a lot of townships that it seems that things have uh, regressed uh, drastically uh, since uh, 2016. It's not a political thing because I'm from the ANC. This is a voice that comes from the communities in those uh, uh, townships. So we are a certain world. When President Begi uh, is, was making, I, 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 I listened to him. Uh, I listened to him. And one of the, he was basically saying post 94, the ANC took its best cadres to province in Russia. So he said post 94. So he didn't say now we don't have good cadres still at the local government. You know, if you were to take uh, ANC mayors, uh, just on top of my head, that you have uh, most deployed, the mayor of Johannesburg uh, has got a master's. He's got a um, history in, in, uh, in governance, uh, not just in the municipality and all that. So, if we were to put the barometer, so what is a barometer of a good deployed person? <coughs> uh, I think he fits that. that uh, uh, he's got a master's, he was an activist and all that. Take the mayor of Oboruleli. I think these are his qualifications and honors, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, the mayor of um, Red West, the NC mayor, a postgraduate. So I, I don't know of any mayor that has been deployed to set by the NC. I might be wrong, who's got a, who does not have a trip or whatever. So it then shows that, that that mistake which was committed was the NC is now rectified. We can go into our own provincial cabinet and look at the people. Who are, who, are, who, are, who are deployed there. The premier, for instance, has a master's, I know. Uh, and and many, the, the, the MEC of Education has an MBA. You know. So I can go on and on. Uh, I will not talk about myself. Can read. <laughs> <laughs> can read but I'm saying we have taken this uh, task serious now. So I agree, President Begui was correct uh, with the assertion that he was making that we have not. And that's why recently we have now uh, <coughs> introduced the requirements that people must uh, be qualified, not just in terms of the political activism in the ministry, that is important, but also other skills that we must be able to bring into, into the fore. Uh, so we got a lot of good people in municipalities. Uh, you go to the city managers, and you look at the criteria. I know of one uh, DA fellow that we serve with here in the, in, in the, in the legislature. Uh, when the DA was in charge, they wanted to make him a city manager. He could not qualify because the eyes too high. The, the one qualification is uh, to be a city manager, to be a, 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 a chief financial officer and all that. So I don't think the problem is that you have people who have not gone to school or who are not skilled. It's more complex than that. It's a systematic, there's a combination of factors. One of the things we uh, deliberately omitted here was to deal with the financial, the state of finances in the municipalities. It's something that we want to have a discussion with yourselves on. Because there are municipalities that have adopted what we call unfunded budgets, for instance. There's got a, so it doesn't matter how good is a CFO. <laughs> if the municipality says we're going to spend a billion and the municipality only has 600 million, you are going to incur unauthorized expenditure. You are going to have problems. So it has nothing to do with your qualifications. There are systematic issues which I think we have to deal uh, with. And when we deal and have a conversation with you on the state of finances, because the law requires that on a uh, quarterly basis, we must make that available. We thought that because the financial year has ended, just now in October, I think we should be ready to have a conversation with the public of how they 
on the financial state of these funds, their ability to raise revenue. We want to make these matters public and have a conversation that is open and transparent, uh, but to also make the public uh, uh, have an appreciation of the kind of the challenges that, challenges that municipalities are dealing with. Uh, they are trying their level best, a lot of the uh, municipalities, and you can't go there, but there are issues which, uh, unfortunately, uh, are also external. And by the way, President Lady also spoke about, to some extent, this issue of financing of municipalities and his view is that the net flows might not be funded. I, I don't think I, I agree or with the President Lady on that. Uh, I think um, uh, we, we should. Should discuss it further, and then uh, the, I think both the HOD and DTG did speak, uh, uh, Mr. Jones, on the issue of improving financial uh, management and governance, uh, and then the measures as well to enforce uh, accountability. But what is important, and this is important, it must be understood that the provincial government does not run municipalities. We don't want to run municipalities. Even if we want to, we will not succeed, we will fail. That's why uh, there are provisions in the Constitution. One of the provisions that we often don't utilize is Section 152, which, which says we must support as a provincial government. Uh, the municipalities, and I think that's the approach we are taking. Though, when we talk to you uh, later next month on the state of finances, there's about three municipalities that uh, were, 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 were put under financial recovery. So, we're going to have a discussion with them because we want to leave those municipalities and make sure that they run. Uh, their affairs, but you can't leave if, if things uh, are not uh, uh, in order. When I was in Procter, you will know I would have also put uh, uh, Twani under administration. One of the things that uh, made me notorious in the TA uh, because they thought that uh, they were not qualifying to, but they did. Uh, and I, 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 I challenged one journalist. In one interview, he said that the court said we were wrong and said we have not read the judgment. And he was shocked when I told him what the judgment said. Because even today, a lot of people still believe that the court said we were wrong. No, he never said that. I said to him, read the court, court judgment. Because there were 10 judges there. Judge Zondo was in the, Judge Zondo was in the commission. And the five judges agreed with us, five did not. But it's a topic for another day in terms of how did we get to a point where it's understood as a majority judgment. But I'm, I'm saying <coughs> uh, uh, at all times we are measured in how we deal with municipalities, but we are also conscious that uh, the municipalities must be run by elected public representatives uh, at that level, and that the legislative and executive authority of a municipality or rather uh, yes, of a municipality rests with council, not the province or national. So in dealing with that issue of enforcement of accountability, we must uh, understand that it becomes the responsibility of those uh, municipalities. Of course, there are lessons someone asks about if a municipality does well. You are correct. The environment is very small, uh, very small. I'm sure there are uh, capered by probably 20 million. But that, it's not about the size of the budget. I think uh, uh, account, those who are accountants will tell you uh, the, sta the standard of, or, or, uh, uh, or, yeah, the, the rules and the standard of accounting applies. Whether you deal with a billion rent or 20 million rent, but if you don't apply the accounting standards properly, you will have problems. So uh, we can then uh, argue that they are small. It's actually commendable because there are municipalities their size which are not getting the same <laughs> outcome. So it means there's something that you need well and you need to check uh, what is it. So I, I agree. Uh, you want to take me back to human settlement now? Let me uh, say uh, 
a shelter or whatever is mine. There's never enough money in the public uh, service because uh, there's competing priorities. Everything is important. Education is important, health is important, roads are important, housing is important, everything is important. So there will never be enough money. So I can't say to you, yes, there's money to provide shelter or not. But of course, uh, we, we weigh and check uh, what's more pressing at that given moment and, uh, and respond uh, uh, accordingly. But to say there is money or not, uh, I can't give you such a, a simplistic answer, but we are concerned about hijacked buildings in, uh, in the cities, not just of Johannesburg, even in Fani, and we would like government uh, to retain those buildings. In fact, just this week alone, I had two disturbing stories. One story was of a, a entrepreneur who wants, uh, who's manufacturing mattresses and who had identified a building in the city of Johannesburg to manufacture these mattresses. They, they, some of which are in the city so refused to give that uh, uh, entrepreneur access to that. And the building is now hijacked. Another disturbing story I heard was uh, of the informal traders in Twani who are using a Twani owned building to store their goods. And the municipal officials are refusing uh, the permission and they're doing it uh, irrespective. So it's an issue I said I would take up with the mayor of Twani because you can't. Why do you refuse people to? Uh, utilize these buildings for economic uh, activity, even for residential purposes uh, when you don't have the plans. So one of the problems about the hijacked buildings is that we've got these buildings unutilized, but we've got officials of government, uh, sometimes colluding, by the way, with the people who are renting these uh, buildings uh, illegally. So, we will also uh, pay attention to that issue of the illegal uh, occupied buildings because we don't just want them to be used for residential purposes. We also want to see uh, economic activities uh, taking place. Otherwise, there's no point of having people staying in a place where there is no economic activity. Thanks. Thank you very much, MC. Colleagues, we are running out of time. MC needs to go and attend the sittings that we can. But MC remains available. Can we yeah. take more questions? Than we oh, so we can take two questions this side. We'll start with you and then we'll go to the person, the mayor, and then we'll see. That's good question. Yeah, but uh, next time they won't come to our press conference because we don't want to put them in touch. Thank you. We need further echoes of this. Good morning, Ms. Um, now that the government is pleased to give us, you know, the layman on a vast scale of one to ten is needed a better supervision. Which one is number one in terms of food and zone? Thank you for your response. And question two. I hear the agency is talking about preparing cases to the subs and the PAs. So I haven't checked the court cases for now, but in the past, most of these cases are thrown over the court of the law. And, and they, they normally say this is a favor of the vexatious case. So I want to find out from government what are you doing to make sure that we get a, a happy ending out of this case? Thank you. Thank you very much. Stevens here from The question is surrounded by the fact that uh, the AG said that uh, three municipalities in county, CDB, and West Branch, and West, West municipalities are in financial distress for five years or more. So the first question is that can you explain this to people uh, in these areas what this means? Because sometimes they have certain attempts that might lead to them. And then secondly, uh, can you provide a way forward, maybe uh, even a suggestion of dissolving these municipalities and their concepts uh, in 
order for them to actually uh, find a new way in order for them to have open the eye in the district. Because now the districts are the ones which are having the, the most issues. <coughs> and lastly, is that uh, are there any amounts coming from national government through the uh, state development money that are supposed to be funding this intervention that are supposed to go to Sudan? Uh, yeah, thank you very much again, Bulele Treaty Jones, BNCA. Um, MEC, we often see projects which are significantly delayed due to poor planning, underfunded budgets, underfunded budgets, and lack of contract management discipline. For example, the Pre Street contractors who delayed that work in the city of Johannesburg. What are the consequence measures you're putting there to ensure that they? The infrastructure does not decay or crumble under the burden due to these kind of issues. And just lastly, Mr. Rick Boy speaks about the importance of strengthening procurement and supply chain management processes. What are the measures that have been put in place to ensure that municipalities do not regress as a result of the abuse of these systems? Thank you. Thank you very much. Colleagues, any last question? Uh, no, no, thank you. Um, if you look at the, 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 all the members, they uh, all have slipped and qualified for it. So they are all number one. All the three members. So there's no metro that has got a qualified for it. The only difference is that uh, there are different matters of efforts uh, from metro to metro. So their audit outcomes are fine. So the metro. There's no metro that is not a qualified uh, uh, audit. Is it? It's fine. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> important. No, I'm talking about the, 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 the outcomes. It's unqualified currently. Oh, so it's um, um oh, so it's twenty twenty is twenty five, and then though it has improved, uh, uh, Mr. Chen, it has improved. It's twenty five, but you know, but you look at Johannes Beck and they put they 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 got them qualified. Uh, uh, so you can say Johannes Beck they put them number one, Johannes number two. <laughs> it does what, but it's not as simple as that. Because when the audit is being done, they, they do a whole range of um, they look at the different variables. So you must compare April with April. You can say maybe this one is number one on HR. This one is number one on procurement. This one is so it's not as simple as that. It's a, a, a big change. So you can't say one is true. So the, the cases, you know, the issue of the cases, it's a, it's a difficult one because, as you know, you can open a case, uh, the prosecution must still decide whether it's a case or not. Uh, it's beyond us, uh, that's one. Uh, two, the police must still investigate, and sometimes they might not find proof. But the fact that there's no proof, it doesn't mean there's, there was no wrongdoing. Or sometimes, uh, you might find that people have been wrongly accused. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that the expectation in most cases is that when you are being accused, there's, there's an expectation that you must be found guilty. And that's why uh, uh, some of the people are even uh, uh, what is it, um, comfortable with using not innocent until proven guilty. I prefer to say not innocent unless proven guilty. Because when you say until, it's as if you are anticipating. And I think that's the problem. Uh, if you accuse me of doing something now, it doesn't mean that I'm guilty. But at the same time, the fact that there is no uh, proof that has been found against you, it doesn't mean that there's no case. It might be that the investigative skills of a particular officer maybe are not up to scratch or uh, on other things. So it's an issue that is beyond us. We will do 
what we are expected to do, where there is a wrongdoing, we will report uh, without any hesitation. We will put together uh, evidence or information at our disposal. We will cooperate with uh, law enforcement and we will also uh, make follow up. That's why we also have a the forensics uh, unit, which is located at the premier's office, so that it's able to look at all the departments who have created that capacity. And then, you, I said to you, um, we have deliberately left out the issue of financial situation of municipalities. We want to deal with it in detail, uh, because it's detail. Uh, uh, it's detailed. There are a number of issues that the media has been raising. One of the issues is the payment of service providers in 30 days. So you deal with it. And by the way, we are dealing with that issue. We will call you and say, this is how we are dealing with it. And this is the situation. And give you a proper picture so that you understand the work that we are doing. Because we are hard at work. And we're fixing a lot of things. So that's why we said today, no, let's focus on the audit outcomes and let's not be all over because uh, we also make your work difficult as a journalist. If we to come here, we speak about paying uh, uh, service providers in 30 days, we speak about the financial state of that municipality, the audit, the, then you are all over. When you go back to a new group, you don't know what to do and then you don't know where to start. Then, it's like, but why why did these people call us? You know, it's a waste of time. So now we're giving you see it's nicely packaged. When you, <laughs> when you, we can even give you a head a, a, what is it, a headline. You know, <laughs> and how they making progress on edge audit you know, something like that. So we can even help you with that line. So we structure them properly so that when you call, you look forward to coming and saying at least there there is clarity. We know they're going to help us. So we are not going to run away from the issue of the financial distress of municipalities. We are not um, having any plan of dissolving any municipality. We can uh, tell you that much. Um, and anyway, some of these financial difficulties that the municipalities are facing, it's not of their own making. It's uh, objective uh, factors in the uh, the municipalities they find themselves uh, in. And we can go into detail about that. If you look at the West Rent, uh, for instance, you know it used to be a mining town, and now it's no longer, there's no longer mining activity. And there's a lot of RDP houses there, people who are unemployed. We can go into that, but we don't want to uh, get distracted. And then uh, uh, there's always money going to municipalities, not because of the district uh, uh, development model. Uh, you know, district development model, when it started, even some mayors, they thought that there is some bag of money, which is already district development model. And then the government will come and say, this is no, district development model, it's a system of governance in how government must work and be coordinated. What it means is that uh, you can't have a department of human settlement, for instance, building houses without the municipality knowing, because the municipality must put bulk infrastructure. You can't have a department building houses and the department of education does, know, does not know, because they must build schools. You can't build the houses and be putting 20 or 30,000 houses, but there's no a clinic, there's no hospital, there's no police state. It's about that. It's not about saying, district. no, there's no such a thing. But having said that, there's always money going to municipalities. Uh, there's three sources of funding to, to municipalities. Firstly, it's uh, what, they, what is called the equitable share. Uh, that comes from national, and it's given to municipalities, all of them, all of them. So the debate now, and that's why the president was talking about the reviewing the financing model of municipalities, is whether that money is enough or not. Because even provinces receive the equitable share. But municipalities are arguing that provinces are getting more uh, when in fact they think they must get more. But the second issue is uh, 
what is called conditional grants. There are conditional grants that go to municipalities. For instance, you've got what is called MIG, Municipal Infrastructure Grant. You've got the grant uh, from Human Settlements, that is called, uh, what is that grant? No, not the Human Settlement Development Grant. There are the Urban Settlement Development Grant. There's a transport grant. So there's always money going to, and it has nothing to do with DTI. It's the fact that the, the law requires that the upper, uh, or rather the other spheres of government must uh, share with the local government, but also there are functions that municipalities perform on behalf of province or national, like libraries, the province will give them money in order. So you must know at all the times there is money going to municipalities, coming either from national or from, from, from province. The third source of funding for municipalities is what they call their own revenue. And that's what they raise through your rates and taxes. And that's why from time to time they will increase and all that. And some of that money they raise, in fact, I think it's four. It's not just that. Because the other one, it's a money that they get from buying and selling water and electricity. Because municipalities buy water from red water and they sell to you. They buy electricity from uh, ESCOM and they sell to you. So I, I can safely say there's four sources of funding for, for financing for the municipalities. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> the incomplete uh, project, <laughs> Joe, uh, and I think I will ask this, uh, I'll ask MEC, you know, there's a section I used to understand very well when I was MEC for Copta, it's called Section 106. So whenever there's a problem in a municipality, I will write a letter to the mayor and ask for explanation. Uh, because that section says that if there's a problem in a municipality, the MEC of Copta can institute an investigation. So in the case of Bream, because I've seen there was an issue, I think uh, we have to ask the MEC for Copta. We have to formally uh, ask the MEC for Copta to seek explanation. I don't think I have that uh, responsibility in terms of the act. Uh, my responsibility here is uh, uh, yeah, finance, you know? So I'm just dealing with that, but I think uh, because there's money involved, Apart from the lives of people and service delivery, I will formally ask the MEC of Copta to invoke Section 106 and ask uh, because it seems that it's a, it's a big uh, problem. Yeah, and then the issues of supply chain, uh, there's, there's not much the DDG can say except that we are supporting the municipalities, except that we've got systems in place except that we want to ensure that they deploy the right people and then we do our oversight role. That's why I spent a bit of time earlier on explaining that we are not running municipalities. And I know there's a temptation sometimes uh, when you explain at uh, this level of government to think that there are certain things you can do. You can't because the law says, in fact, the constitution says both the executive and the legislative authority in a municipality rest with council. In the provincial level, it's different. It says the executive authority rests with the premier, and the premier can delegate that to MECs. So MECs can do something about these matters because they've got the executive authority that has been delegated to them. But in the, at the municipal level, that uh, authority rests with the council, and council can delegate to whoever. But we will do what is expected of us, and that is to do oversight, is to train them, is to skill them, is to uh, provide support when necessary, including giving them the inner resource. But if they want us to do more, we don't have a problem. Um, we always uh, I know you have to go, but just for clarity, when you say involve section 106, would this be tantamount to an investigation that you will expect the MEC to conduct this particular? Yes, so, 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 
Section 106 means the MEC can investigate. But what the MEC can do before he, he makes a determination, he must at least ask to be given an explanation. And if he's not happy, he can then uh, investigate. So that's what the law uh, empowers the MEC to do. So I think in the case of Bree, uh, after what we have seen, um, it's alleged that 200 million or so. I think there's a basis for the MEC to consider uh, looking at Section 106. Uh, but it's up to the MEC for culture to decide. Sure.